Come take a look at a really quick way to paint your power weapons. What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear with you again today with another fantastic hobby tutorial. Today we're going to look at a quick and easy way of, assuming you have an airbrush, sorry a lot of these uh, tutorials revolved around uh, using an airbrush. I mean let's face it, if you got all these unpainted miniatures and on stacks and stacks of uh, boxes and miniatures, maybe it's time to trade them in, pick up your airbrush, and start getting those skills into your hobby arsenal because airbrushing is here to stay believe it or not and it's a great way to save time on your hobby lay down all those sweet base coats those sweet highlights those fades save you the majority of time so you can come back and really enjoy the fun stuff about hobby and like detailing out and you know maybe just giving those models your particular flair now this here is ixion hails that show only custode from Forge World. We're going to show you how to do that blade to that really sweet fade right there and then how to cut it back with a little bit of the same colors we use. Now of course I've worked a little bit more on this. Like I still got a little bit more to do. I'm going to add some gems and stuff like that but at least this tutorial will get you to the point, get you on that fade that you can use for power weapons, you can use for power axes, you can use for even the ends of weapons, plasma glows, things like that. As long as you take the time to go back in and detail out the edges with that white, you are going to make these details pop on whatever colors you paint around them, whether it's a gold, whether it's, you know, blacks, whether it's ultramarine blues, whatever's in vogue right now, this shade of blue goes very well with a lot of it. But just remember, add back in some of your spot colors, like I'm going to put some, some little blue gems and things on this particular one right here. So it's always good to match something like this with a little bit of uh, maybe like some blue lenses, some blue targeters, something like that, just to get the spot colors throughout the model. Well, let's take a look. So here he is, we've got Legio Custodes Tribune Ixion Hail, and that gives you an idea of kind of the paint scheme we're looking for, but I'm not going to do the metal up here, we're going to do this, that blue fade that I've been kind of dreaming about in my head since I got this model. So first off, we've already primed the Paragon Axe thingy right here with... I think this was Retributor Gold Spray. I wanted to use the Army Painter Spray, but already having a gold spray on hand I couldn't see the point to it so first off we're gonna get in there and we're gonna do this fade from the top down outwards to the outer edge right here and we're gonna make it look similar this is gonna be two different ways uh, to do electric effects that we saw with uh, the sisters right there but we're gonna definitely produce something that looks completely different and it's doable because of these large flat surfaces here. I mean we could squiggle in some lightning and stuff but I thought you know what a nice solid fade would look really good on this. So our first color up is going to be Cantor Blue. We've used this in the past on the channel. This is actually almost empty. I'm not sure how much I'll be able to get out of it but uh, we'll use what we can and we have a backup right here if we need to. Just adding a little bit of flow improver can make this paint into any air paint out there. Actually, some ideas can be maybe not the best one at first thought. So what I was going to do was spray the Cantor Blue in here. But then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? It's just easier to actually go in with a brush and base coat the Cantor Blue on to here using my pinky as a brace. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to give it a couple of coats. That's the airbrush. So it's a little bit more watery than it needs to be. So I'm going to give it a dab of the layer paint, which isn't watered down, and see how that sticks. It might not stick that well because this is a, um, no, that's really terrible there. So we'll keep with the airbrush paint. So we're going to keep at it, just working the paint in. It may require a couple of coats, but you know the good thing about this is that it's not going to overspray onto everything. Now we will have to probably redo some of this gold work right here but that's just kind of inevitable at this point. But some nice thin coats of your base coat sometimes for a quick spot airbrush goes a long ways to preserving the work and actually saving you time in the long run. Sometimes when you're base coating, all you need to do is just get a little coat down and then your subsequent coats can really stick right to it, which you see right here. 
I've got a base coat down of the normal Cantor and then I'm just coming in with the airbrush it's nice and liquidy and just going right over top of it and we'll probably do two thin coats of that and be done and that way we don't have crazy overspray and we got a nice solid base coat that only took less than five minutes to do but it's really gonna save us a lot of time on the back end for sure. So there it is, a nice solid base coat of Cantor Blue. It took less than five minutes to do, but again, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Now we loaded up our airbrush with some Lothram Blue decantered air paint in a 15 mil paint pot. You can get these cheap off of Amazon. Just look for, just do a search for 15 mil paint pot. Uh, make sure you get the clear ones. Don't get the opaque so you can see the paint inside. So we got it loaded up. We've got the pressure down to about half using the GMAC controller right there. I don't know what that is, but about half works for me. We're gonna try to get a nice solid short burst, controlled burst in here on the, we're not gonna aim, well actually I'll probably aim right at the edge of the blade right out there. So that's where we're going. I should probably have a, should probably have some gloves on, but that's okay. So we're not actually aiming at, there we go. Just pulling it back nice and easy. This is a little bit watered down, so it's probably gonna take a couple of passes to get a nice solid fade right there but you can already see it's definitely starting to come through I'm gonna hit it with a little air just to get that outer edge nicked off which you can see is a little bit watery at this point but you get kind of where we're going here because the airbrush paints are so watery and I had to add a little bit of flow improver to them to get uh, to get them into this bottle they are a little watery than normal so this is a little unusual, so we're going to have to do a second pass. We're just going to get in there, nice control burst, equal amounts of air. And there it is, really starting to come through, but there's a little, I don't know what that is. We'll get that off of there. Then we're just going to add some air. Because it's a little watery, it's okay if it's a little watery. You just got to do a little extra work like you're seeing here, not a big deal. We're just blasting it with a little bit of air from far away. and just letting that dry up right there. So we'll do a couple more thin coats of that just to get it to the consistency we're gonna need. So there you see a couple of thin passes. I turned up the air pressure a little bit to get some better dryness of the paint coming out there and we've worked it up towards the edge, got that nice solid fade that I was looking for. Now we're gonna take the same color. There's a little bit left in the pot and we're just gonna concentrate on the very edges. So I'm gonna twist this. So I'm going down the blade and just hitting the very edges here very lightly just to build up a little bit more solid of a base coat on the edge of the blade for the color transition, the next color, which is gonna be all tan gray. Just getting in there and doing that. I also had to use an actual air br or brush to get that solid edge there because airbrushing straight down would just make a mess of everything. So sometimes using the brush in conjunction with the airbrush is also a very much a time saver so you don't have to go back and repeat any work. Up next is a 50-50 mix of all fan gray and that Caldor or that Lothram blue that we were just using there. You can see it's a little bit more pastel -y, but not too obnoxious or anything at this point point. and now we're just going to do the same thing but we're going to aim actually off in the space here instead of the edge just to get that better fade so again we're going to aim down the blade off in the space and pull back with our fade it's actually pretty good let's see very very close to the color that I would like it to be but let me just pull it back and feather it in a little bit very simple it's very hard to see at this point actually because it's a 50 50 fade but what's nice about it is that as we feather it in slowly a couple passes because remember we are working with these airbrush paints Right there see there's that side there's that side so you can definitely tell there's a difference that as we feather it in and pull it back because that airbrush paint is so thin it's gonna create an amazing transition on just a little bit of space 
pretty much the same transition as we would get on like a large aircraft wing surface or like a vehicle perhaps. And also because we are pushing it at a decently high PSI, we're not getting any of that splat or anything that you would traditionally see because it is such so thin down of a paint. Now we're just gonna hit some air right here because we got a little buildup, that's okay. We're just gonna let it dry out. Now up here you'll notice again that there's gonna be a little bit of speckling, so we'll have to go in with a brush and tidy that up just on the edge itself. I'm gonna give it one more pass here just to feather it in. This is the this is the details that really make your stuff stand out. Anybody can airbrush it in two seconds, but it's the type of fade and the work you do here that really sets you apart from other folks. Now we're gonna get one more fade coming up here, which is pure Ulthan, and I'm gonna concentrate it down at the end of this tip, almost like it's glowing down towards the edge right here to give a little bit more of a, a direction to it. There you can kind of see where it's going, and we are off to the races. I'm really happy with this result right now. And last but certainly not least is a little healthy dollop of Ulthan Gray straight up. Now obviously we're going to aim way off in the space on this one and pull it back and just hit the very edge with this white. The problem with white, sometimes I guess this is more like a white gray, is their splattering issue. But again, using the Citadel colors, they are super watery. You can always add flow improver to make your colors spray better. There you can see I'm just getting a leading edge. Really just trying to keep it under control. Now it did splatter a little bit back, but what you can do sometimes is a little finger erasing, which I'm going to do right here off camera. And kind of clean it up a little bit with a little bit of splatter that that, that is bound to a core, a core right there. I'm waiting for that to dry, get a little air. but it'll pull through when we hit it with a little bit of glaze at the very end of the project. So now we're gonna go on a really tight little line on this edge here, the leading edge again. And again, repeat the process, just going right down the line. There it is, nice and bright, super easy right there. Come back here, fix this little fade. Again, going down the line. And there it is, super easy. Now the last part will be a little bit of brushwork, but it won't take much to really make this start popping in about two seconds. Okay, so I went back in actually and faded back a little bit Cantor blue in the cracks right there just to give it a little bit more definition, which I am super happy with. I think that looks really good. And now to finish it all up, we're just gonna grab a little bit of our Altan Gray and put a little bit onto the tip here. And now we're just gonna go perpendicular, across the blade like, like so, just to give it that stark contrast right there. All the way up to the top here. Nice even coats, because remember this is, I'm using the watered down airbrush paint right there. And we'll also creep up into this corner Keeping perpendicular, we're gonna have to come back and clean off those wires and that, that gold section there, which will be a little bit of exploratory research because I'm not sure how the Army Painter golds match up with the G-Dub golds, but there it is right there. We're pretty much done with the work. Go over it one more time. Come back to the top. Now we would give this a little bit of a glaze, probably using Gilliman. Gilliman glaze watered down with a little bit of our future floor wax mix. However, I'm going to wait on that because what I want to do is I want to do all this gold work here and then I want to use some of the glaze and splash it around this back very evenly over a few thin coats to kind of make it look like it's glowing onto the gold. So that'll be my very, very last step in this process here, but I can't do it until I've got all the gold down. So the very last thing to do right now is hit it with a little matte coat so none of this rubs off while I'm working on the gold and wait till I finish the gold. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial on how to fade out power weapons. Really neat and easy. The key is your transitions down at the end, working from fixed points and pulling it back, almost feathering it up the blade itself right there.
deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.